Guys, it is that time of the week again. Welcome back to the Planet Football YouTube channel and to our classic footballing reaction series. The player we've picked out for today's reaction is Marco Van Basten. Now, like it's been the case with the last few reactions that we've done, I don't really know all too much about Van Basten. I know that he retired at a fairly early age, but other than that, my knowledge is fairly limited on this one. As I was very excited to go ahead and jump into this one, thank you to everyone as well that has been leaving your suggestions for other players you'd like to see me reacting to in the comments down below. We're slowly working our way through the list, but without any further ado, yeah, let's jump into this one. So let's go ahead and jump into this one and see just how good Throughout was Marco Van Basten. History, there's only been one classic striker to ever win the Ballon d'Or three times, the most of anyone who's ever played at the nine position. Oh, wow, Batman I didn't know he won it no three times. Marco Van Basten. So just how good of a player was he to win that award that many times? And where does he rank among the all-time greatest footballers? Let's find out. Wow, yeah, that is some achievement. Three Ballon d'Ors. I mean, living in the Marco era of you know, Messi and Ronaldo, the Netherlands but... and spent his entire childhood incredible. learning about the game of football, playing for a local team since the age of six. Van Basten's family was also heavily influenced by the game. In fact, his older brother Stanley had even aimed to be a professional footballer, but just wasn't quite good enough. Marco, on the other hand, was the hidden gem in the family and had incredible potential as a young player. Ajax yeah. would hear of this local sensation and sign him when he was only 16 years old, which is quite ironic as they were the same club that had rejected his older brother Stanley years back. Van Basten would make his professional debut for Ajax in the very same season that he signed his contract. Amazingly enough, he would go on as a substitution for no other than the late, great Johan Cruyff. Quite oh, wow. funny, knowing Story how great dies. his career would end up as well. But back then, nobody had any clue just how great the 16-year-old Van Basten would become. It would take him less than a year to start making a big name for himself as the very next season he would score 13 goals in 25 appearances helping Ajax win back-to-back -back Eredivisie titles even wow, seriously so challenging at that young age as well he was already like bursting straight onto the scene and making that impression 16 signing that contract so yeah, wasted no time in getting going for Ajax today. The current European top scorer and first choice striker for the Netherlands, Wim Kieft, for his starting spot in Ajax. He would go on to impress the club management so much that they would sell Kieft the very next season just to open up a spot for Van Basten and solidify his role as the starting striker. Wow, he's still as a teenager. In season, I mean, I actually Van have Basten a great record with bringing through a young moves, superstar. The 19-year-old would be named Eredivisie's top goal scorer for the season and also win the European silver boot as the second highest goal scorer in Europe by scoring 31 goals in 31 appearances. Something incredibly insane for his age. Wow. Fire Dutchmen were saying that he would be the country's next generational talent, like Johan Cruyff. Although they played quite differently, they just showed so much talent at their position that watching Ajax's young star was a must for football fans back then. But there was also a time where Van Basten was criticized as a one-dimensional striker. However, by his fourth season, he would prove many doubters wrong. He would go on to score 27 goals and have 20 assists in 38 appearances, having a .71 goals per game ratio, complementing it with .53 assists a game. Becoming I mean, that right there is absolutely outrageous in terms of, you know, the numbers and things like that. But uh, interesting that they mentioned about sort of like a one-dimensional striker and things like that. I don't know. I think it's just because I've got like a, a preconceived of like strikers back in the day and then just filling into that sort of classical number mold, number nine mold and things like that. And I thought that that might have been the case, but even watching some of the goals that he's scoring here, I mean, you can tell, you know, the range of goals that he's scoring, the dribbling ability as well to just, you know, weave in that attack situations. Top scorer yet again, as well as finally winning the Dutch Player of the Year award, getting his third oh, like a goal poach, like I thought he might be. Critics, proving that he could also help his teammates find goals and succeed as well. In fact, Van Basten's footballing IQ was among the best ever. On top of his acrobatic athleticism, amazing touch, and great positioning, you get an absolute threat at the striker position. Oh. Van Basten was also great with using both feet and had a nice oh. frame for scoring headers, demanding attention from a defender to mark him at all times. Lastly, Van Basten has the third highest penalty conversion rate in history, wow. scoring 51 of the 54 penalties he's taken throughout his career. An incredible 94.4% accuracy making him an incredibly calm and collected player. Oh, look at that, the little touches moments. and everything. In the 1985-86 season, Van Basten would have a monstrous 39 goals and 4 assists in 34 appearances. Jesus, he was an absolute machine. 1.15 goals a game, finally winning him the European Golden Boot, winning the Eredivisie Top Goal Scorer Award for a third time, nice. and also winning the Dutch Cup. But he wasn't done there. 
as on his seventh and last year with Ajax, Van Basten would have the highest goal scoring season of his career with a mind blowing 44 goals and nine assists in 43 appearances, Jesus. winning back to back Dutch Cups as well as the UEFA Cup. Van Basten was known as the best striker in the world and to some, even the best player in the world. Here in 1988, as fate would have it, a reviving AC Milan would pick him up and sign him as their go to striker to help revive their declining team at the time. Okay, However, yeah, I thought he played in health Italy. issues would start rising up for Van Basten around this time, which we'll get back to later on, as it would be important in the future. He played only a total of 19 matches due to constant ankle issues. There wasn't any particular severe injury or event that caused this, but Van Basten's ankle seemed to be quite injury prone and fragile. Okay. Despite that, his talent was still there, scoring 8 goals in that time, a .42 goals per game ratio despite never being in good form that entire season. Yeah. Van Basten's second season in Milan, however, was arguably the finest he'd ever have. He played the most games of his career, appearing in 47 matches and scoring 33 goals while providing 33 assists. Incredibly insane for someone in his position. 33 back then. goals as well as 33 assists is absolutely like mind-boggling really. Um that, that is absolutely incredible. That's the sort of numbers you know we'll see, you know, we've become accustomed to like Messi and Ronaldo putting up and things like that. Showing his skills goal more than just putting the, the ball in wow. the back of the net. It might not have been the most efficient goal scoring season of his career with only .70 goals a game, but it was definitely the time he played with the most heart and passion. Van Basten would be Milan's top goal scorer and help his club win the European Cup. He looks like Champions an incredibly League complete strike with, with all those sort of dimensions taken into the right of issue. European dominance for his club. So you might think, yeah, okay, he won the Champions League, but how is it the finest time of his career? Well, during the 1988 European Championship, Van Basten would go on an absolute tear and help the Netherlands win their highest prestige title in history, scoring five goals, which included a hat-trick against England, a clutch 88th minute last goal against West Germany in the semi-final, and scoring in the final itself, as well as winning the player of the tournament along the Both way. Feet is Such incredible. an amazing year would win Marco Van Basten his very first battle on door, which I don't think anyone could have disagreed okay, with so seeing the first how one amazing comes. he was. He would once again maintain his position as Serie A's top goal scorer Great in the hit that one as well. further Netherlands continuing Lane, his success it? and the club's dominance in Europe. He would go on to score 24 goals and have 5 assists in 40 appearances, which while great isn't really that insane. However, he would be crucial for his club's success that year. In fact, they would go on to win back-to-back -back European Cup slash Champions League titles, nice. where he would once again come up big in the final against against Benfica by providing the game-winning assist to his fellow countryman Frank Rigard to win 1-0, along with winning the Intercontinental Cup and the European oh, Super Cup. Oh yeah, that, that goal right there actually now. does ring a bell now, I've just seen it. I had no idea that that was Van Basten, but in seeing like highlight reels of like past international tournaments and things like that in the past, I have seen that goal before and wow, yeah, that is outrageous. I had no idea that was Van Basten. Doors as well. Van Basten just happened to be the biggest talent and top goal scorer in his club oh, who that's absolutely outrageous. dominated the past two years. On he that. was so valuable for his club in fact that after a fallout with former manager Arrigo Sacchi, AC Milan owner Silvio Berlusconi sacked Sacchi just to make his star player happy. Wow, yeah. It wasn't like Sacchi was any other manager as well. He was responsible for reviving AC Milan to its former greatness. Yeah, if you got to so play like Van Basten. How important Champions League quarterfinal by Marseille. And of course, Van Basten led the club in scoring yet again. Now, in the 91-92 season, they had finally taken the Serie A title back, with Van Basten scoring the most goals in the Italian league since 1965, ending the season with 29 goals and 13 assists and 38 appearances, nice. a .76 goals per game ratio, something people were more used to seeing from more Van Basten. More of the goal contribution Interestingly, every game Van again, Basten yeah. was also the first player to ever score four goals in a single Champions League match, which nice. was an immortalized performance with the iconic picture of him scoring one of his goals during that match with no other than a bicycle kick. I'm sure you can imagine just how incredible <laughs> four goals in the Champions League back then must have been. It's just like if we see Ronaldo or Messi score a new single game record for goals. Yeah. Van Basten was that type of player in his time. 
With Van Basten's final year for Milan in the 1992-93 season, saw him scoring 20 goals and getting 5 assists in 22 appearances. His most efficient goal scoring year in Milan with .90 goals a game. Amazing to see even after 7 years with the club, he still had more to show the world. just an absolute machine, isn't it? Run from the, previous season the movement around the box is incredible as well. Without losing. This would impress even the doubters that said Van Basten was finished. He would win his third Ballon d'Or, making him the third player in history after Johan Cruyff and Michel Platini to have ever won the award at wow. least three times. However, remember how I said Van Basten had very injury prone ankles? Well, he would suffer a major injury that season ah, that would so put him out where, for yeah. the better half of a year. This injury would be the third time he would ever get ankle surgery in his career. Van Basten had hoped he could recover enough in time for the 1994 World Cup. But as history would have it, he would never recover. He tried many times over the course of two years to complete his rehabilitation, but his body just couldn't handle it and he could never play again. Oh, he unfortunately wow. had to sit on the sidelines to watch his club win their third Champions League title during his time with Milan. And everyone knew that he wanted to be on the pitch. Unlike many athletes that I've talked about who have suffered the most horrendous injuries and made comebacks, even though they weren't anywhere near their old form, Van Basten just wasn't lucky enough to return. He would admit defeat over his battle for recovery on August 17, 1995, with an incredibly emotional farewell at the San Siro Stadium. Wow. I mean, just imagine. By the time he won his third Ballon d'Or, he was only 28 years old. He could have easily played five more years and have been playing at a high level if he had never had that third surgery. Milan was still a dominant team without him, so imagine if he'd been there the whole time. Man, that's I such a what if scenario that is at the end of that, that his career there. During his career. He was just too great. He maybe could have even won five. We'll honestly never know. That's why I believe Van Basten is football's biggest what if. No other player really had the same story as him, finishing his career so early despite having so much success. It's really sad to think about. Regardless of that, however, Van Basten easily remains as one of the greatest footballers in yeah. history and could very well be one of the greatest strikers, if not the greatest striker of all time. Yeah, Less sure. than a handful of players can compare to what he did and what he achieved. Despite his short career, Van Basten showed the world what he was capable of. He made his country proud and immortalized one of the greatest clubs in history. And for that, he will always be respected and remembered. But before you guys click off, wow, I know that I've been is... gone for a while and I just want... Yeah, because watching those clips as well, he didn't particularly seem like a striker that was like, you know, over light on his pace or anything like that. He looked like quite an adaptive player who was quite like smart with his movement in and around the box, having those clever touches um, with his assist record as well, laying off others so he could drop into those deeper positions as well, it seemed like. So, yeah, the fact that he was forced into retiring at 28... It's a massive what if scenario there because, I mean, I think it could have been the case that you know he, he continued to get better into those later years, and um, as maybe he did develop into more of like a goal poacher and things like that. But man, yeah, that is crazy. Such an enjoyable reaction to do that one though. But guys, there we have it. That will wrap it up for today's footballing reaction. Very much enjoyed that one. If you guys have any memories of years gone by of watching Marco van Basten or anything like that, get them in the comments down below and do continue to get your suggestions in for any future players that you'd like to see me reacting to as well. But apart from that, that'll wrap it up for today's video, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you at the same time next week.